Winter is just around the corner. Thankfully, so is the Home Depot. Right now, you can get 20 bags of green fiber blow-in insulation and the blower rentals free, making installation a breeze. Green fiber is denser and more soundproof than fiberglass alternatives, keeping homes quieter while reducing heating and cooling bills by up to 25%. Now you can save money and keep warm this winter with green fiber blow-in insulation. Get 20 bags on the blower rentals free, only at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Joining us now to talk all about it and to reminisce a little bit because he is an amazing specimen himself at 87 years young, like I said, member of both the baseball and basketball college halls of fame, longtime baseball player for the Pittsburgh Pirates on his resume, uh, a legendary figure certainly in Pittsburgh sports. Dick Grote joins us this morning. Hey, Dick, how are you? I'm very happy, happy to be with you people, but as you mentioned, I've gotten old enough now. I don't go on the road anymore. I just broadcast big games at home. That's fine with us. That's fine with us. Uh, look, I, I want to talk to you about the Pitt Panthers, but we're going to reminisce a little bit first. And, you know, Every time I read your bio, I come up with another five questions I want to ask you because it really, the career that you've had and the journey that you've taken over the course of your life is really, really remarkable. And I, I noticed that you went to Duke. And you, and just a couple days after you graduated Duke, you get uh, recruited by Branch Rickey to come play for the Pirates organization. My question to you is, who was the basketball coach at Duke back then? Do you remember who was coaching Duke basketball when you left Duke? When I left Duke, Hal Bradley was my coach, yes. Hal Bradley. <laughs> Pretty cool. But one, one thing that people don't realize, I was the luckiest guy in the world. I was recruited by a man by the name of Jerry Girard. Mm-hmm who was head basketball coach at Duke then. Freshman could not play varsity, so I played freshman ball. My sophomore year, no, my junior year, a guy, Jerry Gerard, came up with terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. And they brought a man in from Washington, D.C. to be the head coach. The name didn't mean very much to me then. He sure made me a much, much, much better basketball player. His name was Red Auerbach. <laughs> and he was, for two months, he practiced one-on-one with me every day before. He said, George, you are the nicest man he ever knew. He couldn't stay there waiting for him to die, and he went back to pro basketball. But how lucky can you be to have Red Auerbach as your coach to the beginning of my, my junior year at Duke. All right, now, Dick, if you had a choice, would you rather see Duke win the basketball championship or the Pirates win the World Series? Oh, believe it or not, both places are special to me. Duke has treated me so extremely well, all the time giving me my education. And, of course, playing for the Pirates in your hometown was something I dearly enjoyed. Did play on a world championship team here, but I was heartbroken when I went to St. Louis. But it worked out much to my advantage to play for the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think of the Pirates now uh, breaking down the team by trading Garrett Cole and Andrew McCutcheon? First of all, they've been trying to pull... McCutcheon, why, I don't know, but for some reason, he was someone that had been trying to trade for two years. He's been a great asset to the Pirates here in Pittsburgh. Fans loved him. We just have to wait and see why it works out. This is a different organization than I work for, but this is a complete turnaround from a year ago, but... It's the, it's the way they run the, the baseball. It's a different team. They live and die with a long ball now. We were a different type of baseball team in those days. Mm. Now, McCutcheon could have made his way into that 60s lineup for you guys, couldn't he? He didn't have a tough time, but he would have been there probably in left field for, for Skinner. Mm-hmm. The burden was a great, great center fielder. Mm-hmm. That was quite a team. That World Series was phenomenal. You Pirates, as you well know, were outscored by 100. 
and you still won the World Series. It's one of the greatest World Series accomplishments maybe in history. And uh, that must still to this day make you fairly proud. It was a lot of fun, especially <laughs> when you beat a great Yankee team with Maris and Mantle and a very solid pitching staff and be fortunate enough to beat them twice. Once in Pittsburgh in 60 and once in 64 with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. And you can still see Mazeroski's home run right now, can't you? Very much so. <laughs> still a very dear friend. He lives a few miles from my golf course. Mm-hmm. Very good. Talking with the legendary Dick Grote on the Bud and the Manchild uh, program this morning. Um, Dick, back in your playing days, did you have a favorite place to play? I mean, you played at some of the real legendary uh, stadiums, including the polo grounds. Was there a place that you really enjoyed going to? Uh, of course, the polo grounds has always been something very special to me. I broke in there as a rookie when I was right out of Duke. And ironically, it has nothing to do with baseball, but I met my dear wife. At the polo grounds. Wow. So that's pretty special. She gave me three of the most beautiful daughters in the world. Hmm. Now, did she work there? How did you meet her at the polo grounds? Was she in the stands? What happened? Her her father was, she was from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Big, big Duke fan. And... He yelled at me one day at a ball game, and I went over to say hello to him and realized his daughter was a spitting image for Grace Kelly. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) The worst part about it is I forgot his name. All I remember was her first name, and I had to get our broadcaster, Bob Prince, to go up into the stands, got her telephone number, and we were married six months later. Is that right? Wow! And how long were? How long did uh, you know? How long did? How long has or did that marriage last? Until she passed away here twenty years ago. Wow! So what is that? Like a forty, fifty years? How long were you married? Forty years. Forty years. That a boy. Well, good for you. That's staying power, man. Well, you won't be on the road for this one, uh, Dick, for Syracuse and Pitt, but we've got an interesting basketball game at the Carrier Dome, and not one that we face often here in ACC play, and that is two teams that are kind of struggling. Uh, Pitt even more so than Syracuse, losers of five in a row. Uh, The Orange come in, losers of four in a row. Uh, Neither has gotten off to a very good start in ACC play. Uh, Give us a little sense of uh, what is going wrong with the Pitt Panthers this year, and uh, is it fixable? Well, believe it or not, they are going to struggle all year long. Right now, the only veteran they have is it was redshirted. He'll be back next year. Other than that, there's nothing but young freshmen and transfer sophomores on this Panther basketball team. And they're just young, aggressive, but they make so many mistakes turn the basketball over something awful, and just at crucial times go into those funks when they go seven, eight minutes without a field goal. And you cannot do that in the ACC. How has things uh, changed with Stallings at the helm in Pitt? Uh, you know, give us a little bit of an assessment of how the program uh, has been shaped by him and what kind of struggles they've had. Well, Again, he took over a team with four seniors on it, Mm -hmm. all from Jamie Dixon. And it was a situation where he had two youngsters playing with the four seniors last year. And one of those youngsters transferred, had two years left, graduated from, from Pitt in three years, He's now playing for the University of North Carolina. Mm. What a come down. I I hate to say that. Of course, having gone to Duke, I have no great deal of love for North Carolina. But (laughs) he transfers, and he is playing for North Carolina. So that hurt. He was their leading scorer last year. And he's a young man who can flat out shoot it. But we only had one veteran left. 
and then he has came up with a bad ankle again this year, and he was is being redshirted, and will be back next year. Other than that, he has an entire team that he recruited, and it just seems like as talented as these youngsters may be, two or three years down the road, starting nothing but freshmen and transfers. Uh, it's not good in the ACC. This conference is just too good to have that kind of inexperience on your basketball team. No question. Syracuse has seen some of the same uh, things this year. Go ahead, well, folks, we're talking with Dick Groat, who in 1952 was the National College Basketball, Men's College Basketball Player of the Year at Duke in 52, and in 1960 was both the batting champion and the most valuable player in the National League in baseball. So he hit almost the high well, he hit the highest of all peaks in professional baseball, hit the highest of all peaks in college basketball. So we're talking to somebody the likes of whom we just aren't going to see anymore. The question is, Dick, getting off the basketball game for a minute, does that bother you that they'll that they're the the Dick Groats Dick Rote is no more. The Dick Rote kind of athlete is no more. Does that bother you? Well, believe it or not, this started a few years ago when you either played one sport or the other. And that that does kind of bother me. In fact, I think there's no reason in the world why a youngster can't play two or three sports if he wanted to. Now... Football coaches in this area obviously want their football players in high school to live and die with a weight room. So that means you're out of the basketball end of it, and it's disappointing to me. I love playing both sports, and I'll always be dedicated, dedicated to the fact that Duke University and my high school allowed me to play both sports. In fact, I was even lucky enough, contrary to what a lot of people don't realize, I was fortunate enough to play one year in the NBA until Uncle Sam called me to go in the Army. And then when I was discharged, Mr. Ricky decided I was only allowed to play, play one sport, which had to be baseball. Well, it's an extraordinary thing because what you've just outlined is is a human being who we'll never see again. A guy who played the NBA in the NBA, a guy who was a star in Major League Baseball, a guy who was a star in college basketball, and a guy who's still in and around all that was in the military, which is you know nowadays that's just an unfathomable thought. Yeah. And while you were terrific at what you did you were not unique in that you attempted to do all of this i mean and in your day a lot of people played multi-sports in your day a lot of athletes served in the military now we ha- we don't we just don't have you and your kind anymore so for what it's what it's worth i salute you for on a lot of that and let me follow up with, with one more for you dick before we let you go and that is you know you know bud mentions what he mentioned there i'm going to take it a step further and talk about how college basketball and you've seen it in recent years as the color analyst for pit how now you've got this young team in pit right syracuse has a young team too that they're trying to develop players and you say to me hey when they're juniors you know we might have something here, but right now this team is too young and it hasn't come together and there's some talent, but it doesn't measure up to the talent that they're to play against in their league. Syracuse is having some of the same problems. But part of the problem also, Dick, and what has developed in recent years is as soon as a guy gets any good, he's gone. I mean, Syracuse has a terrific player on its roster this year, Tyus Battle, a young player, um, really developing, really coming along. But in all likelihood, Tyus is not going to be on the Orange next year because the NBA is come knocking. What are your thoughts about how that has changed the scope of college basketball? Well, first of all, I think somehow the NCAA has done a miserable job of handling basketball. If you want to go to the NBA and you're that good one year, that's, that's fine. Sign out of high school and go from there. Football, you have to go at least two, two and a half years. Basketball, one year and you're out. That means you give a youngster a scholarship, he comes to Duke or 
Pitt, wherever he goes, he goes to class for one semester.